What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt Deville with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder. Deontay Wilder was asked about a potential Anthony Joshua fight after he defeats Tyson Fury, if he defeats Tyson Fury, and he had this to say. He said that after the Tyson Fury fight, I want Anthony Joshua, Eddie Hearn, to have the same type of energy when I defeat Tyson Fury, because it seems like every time, every time that I'm with a fight, they have all types of offers and they have a desire to fight me. It's never when I'm available that these guys want to step up and make the fight happen. I'm a man of my word. Everything that I speak, I believe and I receive. Therefore, if I want that fight, that fight should happen to me. So if these guys do want this fight for real, they need to keep the same energy. Those are the words of Deontay, the bronze bomber, Wilder. My counterpunch. I like the same energy bid because it's ironically, it's ironic. That's exactly, that's exactly what I think of Deontay Wilder. And that's the, that's the exact energy I want Deontay Wilder to have. I want him to keep the same energy when he made this interview, when he responded to barbershop conversations, his buddy, his partner in crime, his cheerleader in crime, you know, on the bandwagon, on the party bus, these guys that ride with him when he did make this interview, because I know exactly where the source came from. I want him to keep the same energy when he knocks out Fury. I want to, I want Deontay Wilder's confidence to rise out of the earth to the moon. I want his confidence level to be way up there so he won't have to worry about winning, losing, or whatever. I want him to take the fight. I want him to have that same energy that he just remained. He just responded that he wanted Anthony Joshua to have. In fact, let's put it this way. I want Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua to have the same type of energy. The same type. I don't want to hear a rubber match because if you knock out Tyson Fury and you already thought you already knocked out Tyson Fury, why are we having a third fight? And that third fight, people, does not have to happen right away. It does not. People think that it does. It does not. So if he knocks out Fury and Fury wants to go again, which more than likely Fury, I'll take the Dalsa. He got lucky. I was dumb enough to get caught with the right hand. It happened before. It happened again. And I will, I will make sure I will. The third time's a charm. Lucky charms. Whatever. Right? But if he goes for undisputed, he can still fight Fury at the end of the, end of the year. If Fury still wants to take it like I think he's going to happen, but he can fight Joshua in between those, those times. Um, however, what he said at the second part, oh, when I always have a fight, you guys always want to fight until I don't have a fight. Now you guys are nowhere to be found. I, I don't know when, what he was talking about at that point. Because chronologically, after the Povetkin fight, Joshua put two... Um, Advanced two, he got he actually rented two spots, one in uh, September, the other one in April, and said, "Hey, this is what that's the that that's who I want to fight, Deontay Wilder." Deontay Wilder wasn't fighting anybody in April, so I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. You know what I mean? He fought Tyson Fury. And then that was a that was a fight that was perceived to be strung together really quickly because the tactic was, hey, we can let's take the fight with Tyson Fury and see how Tyson Fury, me and Tyson Fury can work together. Unlike while I'm unlike Eddie Hearn and myself and our team. So what they were trying to do, they were trying to make a comparison. See, Tyson Fury really wants to fight because if you want to fight, you're going to work together. Unlike Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua. I know that's what he did. He said, man, this fight was done quickly. This fight was made quickly. We had no problem. Everybody was so nice and friendly. I don't, if people want to fight, this is what's going to happen. So what they were trying to do, they were trying to paint a scenario that because the, the negotiations, you know, perceived so poorly or so bad on Eddie Hearn versus Shelly Finkel, because these motherfuckers didn't like each other. That was the real deal, right? That... 
when the, him and Tyson Fury made that fight, it was so smoothly, it was so open, it was so quick, and it wasn't so quick. Okay, they didn't announce that fight to October. It, they started negotiations in August, people. Okay, so let's cut, let's stop the shit. It took them at least seven, eight weeks to get that fight done, which it's supposed to have been a week's time. And hey, let me look at the contract, look over the contract, sign the contract, send the contracts back, and that's the fight. That what it was supposed to have been, but that wasn't even the case. So. Uh, yes, Eddie Hearn was sending offers at that time, right? But you always can negotiate when you got a fight. So I don't even know what Deontay Wilder's talking about, you know? if he, Unless he's trying to do everything himself, like he sent that $50 million email to Eddie Hearn, you know what I mean? He, he all of a sudden turned promoter, but then you got a, a manager, then a co-manager, then an advisor, then a promoter. You had all these guys, but you did that shit yourself. That don't make sense, but you did that. So, you know, what's the deal? You still sent that over, but then no one can send anything to you back. So in those offers that were sent to Deontay Wilder's team when Shelly Finkel verified that he was in contact with Eddie Hearn late 2018, okay? Well, the fight happened with Wilder and Fury. It was a draw. And then Deontay Wilder himself did not want a uh, Anthony Joshua fight. Why? Because he wanted to right his wrongs. He wanted Fury, that's all he talked about. I want Fury. I want Fury. I don't want no other fights right now. I want Fury. So he didn't even have a fight. He had a mandatory coming up between Dominic Brazil and the whole debacle between Billy and White was waiting around for his shot, right? But Dominic Brazil had that slot. So his thing was his mandatory. Okay, he could have fought Anthony Joshua before then. He could have fought him in April. He didn't have to worry about that mandatory at all, but he chose to fight that mandatory. We know that his own deal was on the table, okay? It was a $28 million deal was on the table because that was supposedly what Deontay Wilder made in the first Fury fight, which was bullshit because they didn't make enough for that. They made enough to cover what the, their fight purse was. His fight purse was $4 million and Tyson Fury was $3 million and Tyson Fury is supposed to have donated his shit. Remember that? So, you know, it was, look, I don't want to hear, oh, well, when, when I had a fight, you know, y'all want to do, you had all the first part of fucking last year and you, you didn't fight nobody. You didn't fight anybody. You had all this time and you were trying to make deals with Tyson Fury because Tyson Fury was your newborn buddy because both of you was getting together talking shit like a bunch of schoolgirls <laughs> about Anthony Joshua. Because you guys thought, oh, well, he don't want to fight us. He got all this money sitting over there. You know what I mean? And I think they were really jelly because they weren't making that type of money because Anthony Joshua was a cash cow. He's a cash cow in the division. He still is to this day. You know, and I think that bothers a lot of them, honestly, because they know they can't compete financially with AJ. Now, that has nothing to do with in the ring. Okay. But as far as like markability and shit like that, they knew they would have to either accept the term for fighting him and it gets tricky. Both of them, they ain't got shit. Tyson Fury was sitting on the couch for three years and decided to pick Deontay Wilder. And Deontay Wilder was like, okay, I'm going to beat this dude's ass because he ain't shit. Right. And he ended up doing being a lot better than he thought. And that's how, where this whole thing came. And he felt kind of stupid because I like I lost or I got a draw from this dude that was on the couch for three years. You know, but now he claims, oh, well, when I had a fight, that's when y'all wanted the uh, these offers. Bullshit. The zone deal. You was free and clear to fight Anthony Joshua. He was free and clear. He could have picked the, he didn't even have to fight the, uh, the Dominic Brazil. Because a mandatory don't, fuck, fuck, he wouldn't fight mandatories anyway. <laughs> what last mandatory, what, what mandatory fight did he have in 2018? Was it, was it, uh, was it Ortiz? Shit, that was in March of, uh, that was in March of 18, right? So 19, you, oh, I have a mandatory. Dude, you could have took the Joshua fight. That unification would have trumped that mandatory. You could have gave Dominic Brazil some step aside money because they all been waiting anyway. Dillian White's been waiting for the longest. So what difference does it make? You got guys waiting around for you. The WBC protected you. They went with whatever you said. It didn't really matter at the end of the day. So I don't even know what he's talking about, about waiting with the same energy. So by the fault, like I said from the beginning, 
Okay, Deontay Wilder, you have the energy to say you want Anthony Joshua to have the same energy. You have the same energy too. So if you knock out Tyson Fury, be ready to fight Anthony Joshua. That's pretty much it. Call him out after you knock out Tyson Fury, yell bomb squad to the top of your fucking lungs and said, I want Joshua for the rest of those belts. One champion, one face, one name. That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear this other shit about, you know what? We going to have to do it again. <laughs> I don't want to hear any of that shit. I don't want to hear it. I'm tired of this shit. We've been waiting for this fight since 2018 and it's in, 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 in this, I'm tired of it. It's done. We need to really see who is the best out of these guys because that's really the fight people want to see if there is no Tyson Fury. Where the fuck was Fury? Late 18, he comes back to the sport. Okay, he's getting his bearings back. The motherfucker was 400 pounds. Come on, man. That dude was big as shit. He was, de he was 400 pounds. He had, he had Andy Ruiz beat by a motherfucking margin. Andy Ruiz, Big Baby Miller, he dude, the dude was a state puff marshmallow man. Tyson Fury was. He just looked like he got fucking deflated. Right? That's what he looked like. So nobody knew who Tyson, nobody even thought Tyson Fury would, would, was coming back to the scene. Because he ain't been on the scene since 2015. Come on, man. Let's just make let's just be real about this. And you want to fight that fat dude. Now, if he'd have knocked out Tyson Fury in three rounds, you know what? Nobody would have gave a shit. Because everything everybody was gonna say, you know what? You beat a dude that got off the couch three months and thought he he had a little spark and you knocked him the spark out. That's exactly what the narrative would have been, but it didn't work like that. It, you know, so Tyson Fury surprised people. Okay, cool. He can box. Right? But he still got dropped in the 12th and he got up. So yeah, that was a miracle. That was a miracle by itself because his eyes were open and a lot of refs would have waved it off. But Jack Reese didn't because Jack Reese is the type of referee that gives you the benefit of the doubt, people. And Tyson Fury got up and fought like hell and won the rest of the round. So look, back to Deontay Wilder. If he's going to say stuff like this, I need him to remember that, keep the same energy. And if he knocks out Tyson Fury, let's fight for undisputed. And you guys have been counterpunched. Leave your comments below. Please subscribe. And thanks for listening. Peace.